Welcome back to Shavers Insider, your entertainment news roundup. So Fashion Forward launched season four with 22 designers bringing us cutting edge couture and the latest trends. Now, as the whole event has grown, so has the success of some of the designers. Michael Cinco, Fan One and Ezra are now all addressing megastars. That's for the Met Gala, the Grammys and even the MTV Awards. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Known as the definitive platform for the Middle East style scene, Fashion Forward continues to drive the regional industry to a global audience. 19,000 guests, 19 catwalk shows and 8 D3 fashion talks and of course supermodel power from Yasmin Le Bon. It was all about Middle Eastern design talent and collections which bridge cultures. The mystery and magic of Arabian Nights was defined by Emirati Zarina Youssef's Spring Summer 2015 collection. The set, the music, the headpieces and of course the gowns whisked us away to a mystical world of ancient civilizations and princess fairy tales. Timeless pieces, simple cuts and an exotic fusion of ethnic embroidery and flowing fabrics. The new take on goddess power dressing. Such an incredible collection, so powerful. I mean, I literally felt like there was some sort of Egyptian goddesses and like a ritual was going to happen. What were you going for? Um, see, this time I don't want it because every time when I do a collection, people think that, uh, you know, they categorize me either it's Indian, either uh, Arabic, either that. So this time I called it Arabia. Right. So I didn't, I took from Gulf, Middle East, uh, you know, I took Egyptian, uh, Moroccan, uh, Arabic culture, all of them, and I called it Arabian Night. So it's a mixture of uh, so many countries. I have to look, you know, for a, uh, what we say clients, that they look like princesses. So what happens when I do a dress, I have to wear it myself. If I don't feel I'm so powerful woman, I throw it out. So I love the woman all the time to look powerful and feminine. So it's empowering the women who are wearing your clothes. And let's talk a little bit about the fabrics, because I know you spent some time in India, and that's where you kind of developed your love of texture and materials. See, um, I don't know. I love India. I love the ethnic uh, in India. I love the culture of India. So I think when I started my first career, so I used to travel there. And then once I went there, I was in love with the colors. I was in love with everything. So I have to go. If sometimes I'm not inspired, believe it or not, I go to India. And it's the buildings, the culture, everything, the colors inspire me also. From Arabian Nights to Arabian Dreams, the Empress 1688 drew inspiration from the desert and Morocco, using a more muted, dreamy colour palette of beige and blues. Pure cottons, crisp linens, tailored suits and of course safari dresses, the Golkar brothers, that's Babak, Haman and Farhan, are now literally going global. Okay, so guys, like last season's collection was all sort of Victorian Albert, and this one is so different. What was the premise this time? Well, we were looking at a sense of memory and specifically looking at a time where there was no cameras as ready as available now. So you could go on holiday now and you come back with, uh, you know, with so many videos and pictures and Instagrams, so you can almost relive that memory. But this season we were looking at a time where it wasn't so readily available. So we were looking at the 70s, and spe um, specifically the 70s and Yves Saint Laurent and his life in North Africa, in Morocco. So we were looking at taking, dissecting specific elements that would trigger a memory for him or anyone else who would tra travel in that period of time. So we were looking at a lot of, of the sand colours, we were looking at a lot of safari kind of looks and then we were also looking at the blue of his house in Morocco. So there was a lot of specific references to those, taking you know, what things would specifically remind someone going back home after an adventure or a holiday. And that was, you know, obviously tying in with the film with the sort of love struck guys running through the desert. Why did you want to do a film at the beginning of the show this time? I think we're living in a very visual kind of way and I think it's important for people to understand. I mean, the written word is fantastic, but this time, I mean, the kind of lives we live now and the kind of world we live in, it's very and important. it sets the mood as well. It really sets the mood for the show as well, which we thought would be perfect to do, yeah. especially for this season. Absolutely. It was such a different tone. Now, women's wear, you guys are doing so much more women's wear, which I'm so excited about. <laughs> now tell me, how is it different designing for women as against designing for men? 
Uh, for women, it's, it's, I would say it's much easier because women are more open to experiments with what to wear, but men uh, they are still stuck in you know, there's certain things men will wear and they won't wear, so I think women's is probably easier. That's interesting. So women, you kind of feel you have much more scope, it's much more adventure. Yeah. Yeah. We can experiment more with women's. Okay, that's good to hear. And finally, I know you guys have won a wonderful award recently. Yes. Tell yeah. me a little bit about that. Don't be too modest. Okay. <laughs> no, but it's incredibly humbling. I mean, to be a brand from the Middle East and to represent, you know, the region in an international final, which is yeah. it's, I mean, it's incredibly humbling for us. So we really hope we do everyone in the region very proud. And that's coming up in January, right? Yeah, yep. we're, we're the finals in London Collections, so we also get to show our brand in London Fashion Week, London Collections, which is quite amazing. <laughs> So those were the brothers, but these are the sisters. That's Lubna and Nadia Alzakwani of contemporary Omani brand Endemage. Their ready-to-wear collection revealed embroidered petal overlay capes and feminine floor-skimming dresses in a spring palette of pink, white and turquoise. So Endemarge is basically the merging of two ideas and obviously like two different trains of thought and obviously East meets West. Tell me a little bit more about that ethos. The merge that we, uh, we chose to focus on was a merge of our country, Oman, with uh, more of the modern wear, wear that, that exists right now in the region. So that's where we got the name from, basically. Okay, and I believe that it was all based on Zanzibar, Zanzibar inspired. Yeah. What happened? Did you go there on holiday? How did it work? Well, we actually did go to Africa, but Zanzibar is a part of Oman and it ha always has been. So we have a very uh, strong influence of Zanzibar in Oman. I wanted to bring that out because not a lot of people know the history of Oman. So I wanted to show that off. Absolutely. Now, I know you use like Omani patterns, is that correct, in some of your designs? What could we see today from the collection? We're very subtle. We're very subtle when, when we show our, our culture. This time, what we chose to do is, with our fabrics, to customize most of it. So, for instance, the leaves that were there, that were embroidered, plus um, we took in the shape of the pineapple, the intricate yeah. designs of the pineapple, and we put that into. Um, it's very summer, it's very light, and it's something that's very strong when it comes to Zanzibar. And celebrity designer Michael Cinco always brings fantasy, drama, and seduction with his fabulous couture gowns. Clients including Beyonce, Lady Gaga, Jennifer Lopez and Dieter Von Teese, he's also now moving into designing costumes for A-list movies. So Michael, that was absolutely divine collection. Thank you. Going back to like your mood boards and your influences, how do you create such dramatic effect but still anchor it in reality? Clothes that women can wear. Well, actually I was inspired by the movie uh, My Fair Lady. I was inspired by the character of Eliza Doolittle that she sells flowers, so most of my collection are more on spring, uh, spring colors. Pastel colors. That we colors, and I was inspired by the flowers like roses, daffodils, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I think it made me realize that, you know, when you make something light colors, it makes the woman more feminine. Yeah. More it gives her a more sort of softer, ethereal kind of thing. And at the same time, they still look sexy. And tell me about the fabrics. What fabrics were you using? It was a lot of lace. A lot of lace, a lot of tulle, and I put a lot of details in each uh, in each fabric. Tell me now. I know you've got loads of celebrity clients at the moment. Who are you working with? Uh, I just finished uh, actually working with uh, Rihanna. I did a, a, a I did a, a couture dress for her uh, for Bazaar Editorials, and I did also costumes for Mila Kunis in our upcoming movie, uh, Jupiter Ascending, which will be shown next year. Amazing. So is the process quite collaborative? Do you spend a lot of time with them working it out, or is it just all you? Uh, they give me all the details and all the things that they want, and I give them the designs, yeah. Stunning, multicolored lace couture dresses and choreography to complement both the menswear and womenswear looks. But it's, of course, Michael's wedding dresses which always steal the show. Spotted on the fro was creative director of Balmain, Olivia Rustang, and the D3 Fashion Talks to foster industry discussion were hosted by the editor-in-chief of NowFashion.com, Jessica Michelle. Aside from the fashion elite and the shows, 
50 of the finest regional accessories designers displayed their creations in the garden. And of course, each day closed with the uber fashionable after parties. The Fash Pack, the Fro, and awesome regional designers. But stay with us because coming up after the break, we've got the best local musicians at Dubai Unplugged. <laughs> 